Las Vegas, Nevada. Las Vegas is about to light up with an epic fight. We've got boxing stars Canelo Alvarez and Jaime Munguia squaring off on May 4th. Canelo, the super middleweight champ, is risking it all against the undefeated Munguia. With both fighters packing serious punches, who's gonna walk out of the T-Mobile arena with a W? We've got our prediction, but the real question is whether Canelo can take Munguia's relentless hits. Another vicious left hook! Wait and find out. Saul Canelo Alvarez is stepping back into the ring for his first bout of 2024, and it's set to be a barn burner on Cinco de Mayo weekend. Cinco de Mayo, whoever, I don't care. He's up against the undefeated Jaime Munguia in the battle for the undisputed super middleweight title. Canelo isn't just defending one belt. He's putting his IBF, WBC, WBA, and WBO titles on the line against Munguia, who busts an impressive 43-0 record. Canelo! This fight marks the first all-Mexican world title fight above 160 pounds, adding even more tenacity to the showdown. This is gonna be a vicious knockout. Vicious. While other contenders like Jamal Charlo, Edgar Belanga, Terence Crawford, and David Benavidez were vying for a shot against Canelo, it's Munguia who's earned the opportunity to face off against boxing's biggest star in this colossal clash of punches. By the way, this upcoming fight is sparking wild criticism with many feeling Canelo should be facing David Benavidez, a former two-time WBC title holder at 168 pounds. He's a good fighter. He's a good fighter, but uh, look, I'm, I'm a great fighter. Benavidez has been holding the interim champion status since 2022 and made quite a statement last year by convincingly defeating Caleb Plant and Demetrius Andrade. He's definitely one of the stars in the sport that's worth the fight. However, it seems like the Canelo versus Benavidez matchup won't be happening anytime soon and it might not even be at 168 pounds. Benavidez is eyeing a move up to light heavyweight for a showdown against Alexander Gvozdik for an interim WBC belt at 175 pounds. Canelo's choice to face Mungi instead of Benavidez stirred some controversy, especially since Benavidez was the public's top pick. The only fight that people want to see in Super Middle is me versus Canelo, so let's give it to him. Many see it as Canelo opting for what they perceive as an easier opponent. Interestingly, this decision also brings Canelo back into the fold with his former promoter Oscar De La Hoya, from whom he parted ways publicly in a not-so-cool way in November of 2020. Jaime Munguia will be undisputed very soon. Mark my word. You know, a bunch of people, maybe you too, are feeling let down by these two stars dodging each other again. Some see it as two big stars going after easier fights to cash in, while others think they're not willing to risk their titles against stronger opponents. Either way, it's a bummer for fans who's been itching to see these two go head to head. That's not my fans. That's my critics. That's a different. And they always have something to say about me. When he's Golovkin, when he's Lara, when he's Toro, when he's... Now it's Benavides. Anyway, Munguia is no pushover either for the super middleweight king. He's proven himself, especially by stopping John Ryder in his last bout. No, it's a 50-50 fight. Considering that when Canelo faced Ryder last May, he went the full distance. That says something about Munguia's power and skill. Of course, Munguia didn't just pop up. He's been dabbling in the weight class above middle weight back in June of 2020, testing the waters. The plan was that if he looked good and felt comfortable, they'd start pushing for a fight with Canelo. And man did he deliver. Stopping Jimmy Kelly in just five rounds and pulling in a huge crowd. Then, five months later, he fought in Canelo's hometown, Guadalajara, Mexico, scoring a third round stoppage over Gonzalo Coria. It was all part of the plan to catch Canelo's eye and get fans talking about a potential showdown down the line. With that in view, Munguia made quite the splash back in the States. First up, he filled up the Toyota Arena in Ontario, California, and went the distance in a thrilling unanimous decision win over Sergei Derevyanchenko, a real fight of the year contender. Right hand to send Munguia back! Then came the big one, a showdown with John Ryder. Ryder had already faced Canelo and went all the rounds with the champ, so naturally, people were curious to see how Munguia would fare against the same opponent. Munguia didn't disappoint. He packed the house again, this time at the Footprint Center in Phoenix, Arizona, and stopped Ryder in nine rounds flat. That performance put Munguia squarely on Canelo's radar and earned him the spot on the short list of potential opponents. Two! You feel like he settled down. Oh, and he's down! 
Whoa, and that was... Now that Munguia's got what he wanted, this fight might just boil down to dollars and cents. Sure, everyone's itching to see Canelo throw down with Benavidez, but there's something about a Mexican versus Mexican showdown on Cinco de Mayo that's just electric. And with Munguia being from Tijuana, Mexico, it's a match made in boxing heaven, especially on such a significant day. Canelo's decision to take on Munguia, even though Benavidez is seen as a tougher opponent, speaks volumes. Canelo's a businessman, plain and simple. They come and say, I offer to, I offer to you 150 to 200 million, I fight tomorrow. And Munguia has been selling out arenas and winning over Mexican fight fans for a minute now. So it just makes sense. When May 4th rolls around, we're looking at a pay-per-view event that's going to blow the roof off, with over a million buys guaranteed. Having said that, we're absolutely stoked about this fight, and there are so many reasons why. Munguia has really captured the hearts of boxing fans with his performances. Sure, there were some frustrations along the way with his opponent's choices, but it's all led to this moment, his chance to shine and reach greatness. And there's a real chance Munguia can pull off an upset here. Remember, Canelo went the distance with John Ryder last year, even though he dominated the fight. But Munguia stopped him inside the distance, scoring a TKO win in the ninth round. So yeah, don't count Munguia out just yet. But Munguia has to be really careful. Even though he's undefeated in 43 fights, with 34 of those ending by knockout, he hasn't really faced any big names yet. As against a Canelo who's been at the top of the game for over a decade, and he's coming into this fight off the back of three solid wins. Sure, he had a points loss against Dimitri Bivol, but hey, nobody's perfect. Some say Canelo's on the decline, but he's never been knocked out, even against some heavy hitters like Bivol, Golovkin, and Kovalev. His defense is top-notch, with slick head movement and counter-punching skills. Expect Canelo to take control after a couple rounds. He's going to be patient, picking his shots with precision, and keeping Munguia at bay. But again, Munguia is a relentless pressure puncher throwing punches. He overwhelms his opponents with high-volume punching and serious power. Pure proof of power. You hope that Canelo can withstand that amount of pressure. For one, he's got the best chin in the business, and can take hits like he did against Golovkin. Triple G threw everything at him, but Canelo just kept coming. That's some serious toughness he'll need. Munguia's got some real strengths, no doubt, but there's this one big issue. He's taller than Canelo, standing at six foot, and he tends to mess up, make mistakes, lose focus sometimes, and those slip-ups could really cost him against someone as smart in the ring as Alvarez. That guy's a genius when it comes to strategy. He's a master at counterpunching and setting traps for his opponents. So if Munguia slips up just once, it could be lights out. Plus, if you look at Munguia's past fights like the one with Derevyanchenko, it's clear he's not invincible. Derevyanchenko managed to expose some weaknesses. So imagine what Canelo could do, considering how much better he is. Canelo will definitely show off his skills, his slick moves, his solid defense, and his ability to land those killer counterpunches. And he's up against Munguia, who's known for his aggressive style throwing punches. It's a chance for Canelo to prove he can handle Munguia's relentless pressure and heavy punches, and maybe a knockout in the middle or later rounds. Of course, Munguia is good, but he's not at the same level as guys like Benavidez or Morel. Still, Canelo can't afford to take him lightly. He's got to show who's boss and set up the big fight performance. For Munguia, he's had a great win against Ryder, and let's face it, Canelo's too experienced to get caught off guard. While a Munguia win could be possible, we're betting on Canelo taking it, probably with a stoppage in the middle rounds, because Munguia's defense isn't his strong suit. But hey, who's your pick for the win? Drop your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to give that like button a big ol' smash and hit that subscribe to stay tuned for more content. Catch you next time!